Hi everyone, Chris from Stone Age Gamer here. Now depending on who you talk to, collecting retro games can be just as much fun as playing them. However, the hobby can get very expensive, and in the case of certain platforms like the TurboGrafx-16, prohibitively so, especially if you're looking to have your games complete in a box. But original game boxes also come with their own set of problems, from flimsy cardboard making the carts difficult to get to, to lack of uniformity on your shelves and beyond, even complete sets can look rather messy when you line them all up. That is, unless you keep your carts in something a little more future-proof. This is a bit box, and it just might be the answer to all your loose cart problems. Let's take a look. Okay, let's talk about some bit boxes, and let's start at the start. So this is your standard NES bit box, and uh, this is how it looks on the inside. Here we go. So uh, this is how the cart fits in, just like that, perfectly well. Ta-da, easy to get in, easy to get out. Uh, and this over here is actually optional. This is a, uh, a pouch that you can insert in any of our bit boxes for instruction manuals. Um, so that I just wanted to show you this one real quick to see what it looks like with the manual nice and in there. Uh, and there you go. That is your standard NES bit box and it works on all sorts of NES cartridges like your standard ones. Uh, you got some weirdos like Captain Comic, these little blue guys here. Ta-da, fits like a charm. Same goes with the uh, Wisdom Tree ones that are looking like that, so your Color Dreams and Wisdom Tree. Uh, how about your Tengen games, like Rolling Thunder? Look at that. Ta-da, fits like a glove. No problem. And even your wacky reproduction cartridges like this fits no problem at all. Alright, next let's talk about Game Boy. Here is a copy of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Fall of the Foot Clan. Now, Game Boy boxes are some of the hardest ones to track down and keep around in your collection. Uh, most people just have a, a drawer of loose carts or, you know, used a label maker to, to label their the ends on their Game Boy cartridges. These bit boxes look real nice lined up on a shelf. Uh, they got a real good design for them, and look at that. They fit a multitude of Game Boy situations. Like, here is a standard Game Boy cart. Looks just fine. Uh, and then you got your Game Boy Color stuff here, like Pokemon. Hey, wait a minute. Final Commando, what are you doing in there? Get, get out of there. That's more like it. There we go. There's your Game Boy Color, and even Game Boy Advance. Uh, it's all designed, see this little lip in here? These are all the same case, uh, and this little lip in there holds that uh, just perfectly. All right, sticking with Nintendo, we have Super Nintendo games. Um, as you can see, these are a nice good place to fit your super rare, expensive Super Nintendo games. Uh, inside this case, it's really cool though, so they fit vertically. You've got this little cutout here, so it really just fits the cart like a glove. And it is wonderful, and it's a great place if you've got something like this or other you know, rare, expensive Super Nintendo games, but you don't have the box. It's a really nice, attractive way to keep them lined up on your shelf. And it works for all manner of stuff, like, uh, Games that never had boxes to begin with, like Super Mario All-Stars and Super Mario World, ta-da! Now it's got an official home to look all nice lined up on your shelf. I also wanted to show off this, week, uh, the artwork that we have available. We can print for Super Nintendo Vertical and Horizontal. Ooh, isn't that nice? And yeah, you got other stuff like, uh, again, crazy reproduction cartridges, like you got a repro of this sitting around. It fits here just like that. Ta-da! Fits sideways, as a matter of fact. Uh, same goes with uh, Super Famicom cartridges. They're effectively the same shape. So here's a, a Street Fighter 2. I'm going to open this guy up and oh, look at that. It's got Super 3D Noah's Ark. And now that doesn't fit extraordinarily well, but it does fit in the case. It'll close and it's not going to really flop around anywhere while it's in there and get damaged. So that's a nice way to keep your Super 3D Noah's Ark game clear. It's also a good fit for your Super Famicom cartridges if you are into that sort of thing. Uh, and just as a fun little bonus, we discovered that these are a great case for Atari Jaguar games. You know, notorious for having this weird curved shape on the top and no end labels. They fit really nicely inside these cases. Now they do have a little bit of room on the side here, but you can see they, they snap in pretty nicely. Now they don't snap in in a way that's going to damage your cart, but they fit in nice and neat. They're not going to go anywhere. Uh, and there you go. Cases for Atari Jaguar games, if you are so inclined. And of course, while on the topic of Nintendo, we have Nintendo 64. And these uh, can also be printed in vertical or horizontal format for uh, a bunch of different games. And these are pretty cool because they have this little extra spot down at the, here at the bottom. Uh, you can see the cartridges fit in just fine, no matter what region you got. And this little guy down here will fit your memory cards like a glove. Fantastic, Nintendo 64. 
So let's venture outside the realm of Nintendo and look at this beastie right here. This is the uh, case for a Neo SD. I don't actually have any Neo Geo cartridges myself, uh, but this is a bit box we make for Neo Geo games. So if you happen to have any of these giant monstrosities that don't have a case, we sell bit boxes for Neo Geo games. You could also probably pack a lunch in here too, right? I mean, you could easily fit a sandwich and some snacks. These are pretty big. All right, next let's talk a little about the TurboGrafx-16. Now, um, TurboGrafx-16 games came in larger boxes that were a little bit taller, but inside those boxes were these uh, like CD-style jewel cases, and they have, uh, this is, I, I've found that these are what you find laying around more often than not. Uh, loose Turbo Graphics games, which are on these Hue cards, or Who cards, or I don't know how you're supposed to pronounce that, but they're pretty nifty. They're a great video game delivery device, uh, but finding them in cases that are in any sort of decent shape is not the easiest thing in the world to do, because uh, these labels get all crunchified on the end there because they were just stickers slapped on the end of this jewel case. Uh, but this is our bit box. Isn't that a nice presentation? They're about as large as the actual TurboGrafx-16 boxes, uh, and they look really nice lined up on your shelf. And here's the inside. They fit the cards just like so. A nice, easy fit. And there you go. Nice, great place to keep your TurboGrafx-16 games. But what of other card games? That's right, TurboGrafx-16 wasn't the only card game in town, there was also the SEGA card! Here's a SEGA Master System SEGA card, now if you just happen to have a loose SEGA Master System me uh, mega, mega card, SEGA card, these names are all crazy, uh, they're the exact same size as Hue cards, they fit in here like a dream as well, ta-da! There is my hero hidden in a box adventure box, of course you can get different box art for these things if you so choose. Sticking with the Sega department, we have Sega Master System games. Some of the ugliest cartridges ever created in the history of mankind. Sega Master System games look pretty ridiculous lined up on your shelf like that. Even in their original boxes, they don't look spectacular. That's why we have the Sega Genesis bit box, which is good for all sorts of things. Obviously, it fits a regular Sega Genesis game. Hey, not for resale. Master System games fit in just like so. Nice and easy, no problem at all. And again, your Genesis cartridges are pretty much the same animal. They're just about the same size, which is wild because it looks like these are bigger, but they're not. They, uh, they just have a slightly different shape and they fit in here just fine. All kinds of Genesis games fit in these boxes. You can see there's a pretty wacky looking cutout. So this also does, uh, let's say you have crazy reproduction uh, cartridges like this uh, deluxe edition of Te Technoptimistic, exclusively available at StrangeGamer.com. Fits in here just fine. Ta-da! Isn't that a cool looking cartridge? Uh, and then you also have your your electronic arts games like Blades of Vengeance here. These guys always came in slightly different sized cases. It always drove me nuts. Uh, and the cartridges themselves were also a different shape. Look at that. They fit perfectly in here. And if electronic arts uh, are, n are not the only problem in your life, you also have Accolade cartridges. Look at that. They fit in here too, just perfectly. Now, this is where things get a little bit weird because we have, where'd you go? This monstrosity right here, Sonic and Knuckles, the bane of pretty much any Genesis collector's uh, cartridge lineup. This thing is shaped so weird because of the lock-on technology, uh, and unfortunately it doesn't fit in the standard Sega Genesis case, but it does fit in the Super Nintendo case. Check this business out. It's not the most amazing fit in the world, but it's not going anywhere, you know. It closes, doesn't really shift around in there. It kind of locks in place because it's uh, the right width for this uh, vertical segment here. And there you go, there's a good way to contain your Sonic and Knuckles. Now that said, this is a slightly different size than the Genesis case. So when they line up on the shelf, you can see it sticks out just a tiny, tiny bit more uh, and it's ever so slightly wider. So it's, it's a ever so slightly off, but it's really, it's fairly easy to ignore uh, if you really want to go that route, uh, and it is a, a better solution than just having it sitting off to the side. The original Sonic & Knuckles box is thicker than a standard Sega Genesis box anyway. Of course, as are Electronic Arts boxes, they're a little bit thicker too, so uh, in the general realm of having things ever so slightly off-kilter for your Genesis games, um, this is an, a nice enough way to contain your Sonic and & Knuckles and not throw things off too badly. 
So, uh, what about other weird shaped Sega stuff? You have, um, let's say you have a copy of Virtual Racing. Now this is the Mega SD. This is a case that we make for the Mega SD, which is the cartridge is exactly the same size and shape as your Virtual Racing for Sega Genesis. I don't have that, but I do have this, so I wanted to show this off. This, uh, this case is designed to fit that, which is pretty wild. Uh, you, if you have your Virtual Racing and you just have a loose copy, you can have a nice place to keep it. Now this is probably the single most important thing that you can do with a bitbox. And that is, you can finally solve the Doom problem. If you have Doom for 32X, you know that this game is pure evil. Now, let's not const- This box for Doom is complete insanity. Now, when I was a kid, I, uh, you can see this isn't a reproduction. I actually cut the cardboard box for Doom I sliced it up so that I could put it in a standard Genesis case because I just liked the way they looked better on my shelf than the cardboard ones. There's a handboard, handful of uh, cardboard games next to the non-cardboard games, and I effectively ruined my box copy of Doom in the process. Uh, so that's why this looks the way that it does. Um, but it also doesn't really fit the cartridge either because I really had to kind of cram this in there to make it fit in the uh, Genesis slot, which is just not the right size for a 32X game. But the biggest problem with Doom on 32X is this. This is upside down and this belongs on the top. It's the only game for the 32X that has this not just upside down and bad, it's just wrong in every way and it sticks out like a sore thumb. This guy does not have that problem. Hooray for reproduction cases that actually have the logo for Doom facing the right way so it can look all nice and pretty on your shelf. And as you can see, 32X games fit nicely. So no more shoving them in your Genesis uh, boxes in hopes of making them fit and having things bow and look all silly and whatnot. But of course there's more Sega in the world. We have the Game Gear. Here we go. Copy Sonic 2 for Game Gear. Uh, you probably also have a lot of these laying around. Game Gear boxes are even harder to come by than Game Boy boxes. So again, having your Game Gear stuff lined up on a shelf isn't the easiest thing to do. But if you're a big Game Gear fan, you'd probably want to have them lined up on your shelf. And these fantastic bit boxes are an excellent way to do so. This is rather tall. You know why? Because it's the same one as the uh, TurboGrafx-16 one. It actually fits Game Gear games inside of it. That's what these four corners are for. Isn't that special? So here's your Sonic 2 in a bit box to line up on your shelf and they would look really darn nice uh, lined up that way. But that's not all. We also discovered that uh, if you just happen to be Atari Lynx flavored in your collecting, these fit pretty nicely in here too. You just kind of stick them down on the bottom and these two, uh, this little space down here for like the Turbo Graphics card and stuff actually connects onto it pretty nicely. So you can see it's not it's not sliding, it's not going anywhere. Uh, it actually snaps in there pretty nicely. Now we don't actually offer Atari Lynx artwork for these, uh, for these cases, but they do fit in there quite nicely. And that is the breakdown of uh, what you can do with our various bit boxes. Okay, so what we have here is two rows of NES games. The top are in original boxes in uh, box protectors, and then the bottom are our bit box cases. Uh, and I did this for a couple of reasons. One, uh, this is the Billy bookshelf from IKEA, and uh, as you can see, they don't the bit boxes don't really take up much more space. Uh, you could probably fit one more box in here if you really wanted to squeeze them together. Uh, you could definitely fit at least one more box if you take them out of the box protectors, but I don't really recommend keeping your NES games outside of box protectors on your shelf. Uh, and then, you know, you see the Bitbox ones down here. They don't really have this little extra space, but they do fit here. Like, it's very easy to get games in and out of these cases. Uh, now, the thing that I wanted to show was that the bit boxes provide this wonderful sense of uniformity that you don't really get when you alphabetize your games otherwise. Um, most of the, the custom artwork that we, that we have available for these things has like the publisher down on the bottom all lined up, all facing the right direction, whereas when you look at the original releases, when you don't arrange them by publisher, uh, like a crazy person like me, uh, you just put them alphabetically, you get kind of this mishmashy mess of a look. Like it's. Uh, it's not that it looks bad, but you have your, you know, two different flavors of Ultra games with the, the angles facing differently. You know, your Tecmo ones all line up here, but when you separate them like these, uh, this Sunsoft there, 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 you got the blue on the top in the three different places. It does kind of look 
a little bit messy, whereas the bitboxes provide this wonderful sense of uniformity, which uh, brings just an incredible smile to my face, being able to see it all lined up with the exact same thing. So you got the, uh, the unique artwork uh, for all the different titles going across here, but you also have a, a, a sense of cohesion, even if you just want to do them in straight alphabetical order instead of arranging them by, pub by publisher, which, you know, you do what you have to do with your own collections. But I just wanted to show this is a really nice look when you have them all lined up on your shelf like this. Okay, so here we are at StoneAgeGamer.com. Uh, forgive the pumpkin-y appearance. It is October when this video is being recorded. Uh, regardless, we are here to look at how exactly you buy your prints for your bit boxes. Uh, so we're going to look at NES ones right now. So we'll go up here to where it says Nintendo, and we're going to go to NES. We're going to look at game cases. And that'll bring us to all the stuff that is BitBox related. You've got the box protectors and all sorts of other business. And we're just going to go right here to BitBox NES Prints. So this is where you can choose all of your prints and stuff. So first you've got to, uh, you know, you want to figure out how many you're going to buy. So if you've bought 15 BitBoxes and you're going to want 15 uh, pieces of artwork, you just uh, quantity this right up on to 15. Ta-da! You add it to cart and you're pretty much good to go. You do have to read the printing disclaimer. That's this right here. This is talking about how things get printed out, how things are cut, and all that other business. Make sure you read this before you place your order. And then you hit the old, uh, I agree to the printing disclaimer thing, and you're good to go. Now, right now, we're not actually going to be able to show you the specific process of actually manually adding them to the cart, because you have to place an order first, uh, and then within one business day of ordering, you will receive an email with instructions explaining how to select your prints. But you do have the option to look through them first before you make any sort of purchases, and that's pretty much the same looking form, so we'll just show that to you in a minute. Or if you just want to download the art so you can print it out yourself, there's a whole other little clicky clicky guy down here. You click on that, and it's just going to open up a, basically a giant Dropbox file that you can click on through, find whatever artwork you want, and print it out. So uh, we're going to click up here for the uh, stuff that we, uh, uh, to look at the stuff that we have available for printing. Uh, as you can see here, the cover art is provided by the Cover Project, but this is not the exact same stuff you'd find if you went to CoverProject.net, uh, because these things are size sized specifically for our bit boxes. It says here, art that is surrounded by a purple border and has this bit box logo in the lower right hand corner is art specifically made for bit box game cases. This art was made to keep the original aspect ratios of the box art. All other art is upscaled from universal game case art provided by the Cover Project. So, here we go. Uh, basically, let's say we want to find artwork for Cobra Triangle. Now, we're going to click on the letter C here. We're going to scroll on down. Oh, I think I just went past it. There it is. Cobra Triangle. You can see this one is purple. It says Bitbox on it. That means this was specifically designed to fit in our Bitbox cases, whereas this one was not. Uh, and if we had placed the order, you could just click on this button here, as you can see here when we're just looking. You can't accidentally add stuff to your cart or whatever. Um, but once you've done this all properly, then you can uh, change the number here for how many things you need. It's always best to go into something like this pretty organized ahead of time. Like if you are ordering, say, 50 different bit boxes, have it all written down first which bit box, which which artwork you want printed first, so you don't get a uh, confused as to which ones you've you've hit and which ones you haven't. And that is pretty much the basics of how this works. Bit boxes are available now exclusively at StoneAgeGamer.com in a variety of shapes and sizes. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you liked what you saw here today, please comment, like, subscribe, and be sure to tell us what you think of bit boxes. Do you like the way they look on your shelf? Are there any types of bit boxes to contain cartridges that we don't make that you want us to? Let us know. Thanks again. On behalf of all of us here at Stone Age Gamer, keep playing games.